Hey guys, today we're trying Biomutant because I got a code for it to go preview it and all that and figured we'd give that a go. Looks like that's an, epsilops, an epileptic seizure warning, so there you go. Gotta admit, I kind of built this game up as a different thing in my head. And that's why. Right back to there. It's a bit of a jarring transition from that darkness and the grittiness of that cutscene to this screen. But it looks like a, a Windows screensaver or something. With like the Fortnite palette, like a lot. Like the font and like the saturation levels. It's like, it's a bit jarring. So that trailer might have done a lot to damage my expectations, but we'll see. Because I'm still playing it for the first time. So we'll see what it actually feels like to play this game. But I saw that and like... He puts his hand in like the goop when he gets like a gremlin hand, like from gremlins, like specifically. It's like, oh, and, and like it was being built as an RPG and, and, and that combat. It's like, oh, you're really you're this tiny thing fighting this huge thing. And it looks like it might have this like gritty, challenging combat where like the scale comes into play a lot and so on. So it was definitely that was definitely piquing my interest a lot. Like that intro sets up a game that I think I want to play kind of like how the, the cutscene ad trailer thing for Dead Island set up a game that I thought I wanted to play, but then Dead Island came out. Uh, looking at that, I'm like, okay, I want to I want to play an RPG in like the real sense of the word, with like like a like narrative focus with a bunch of important impactful choices being made throughout, but also like challenging combat and and like that sort of gritty tone and everything is sort of interesting. But then I some of the gameplay footage I've seen in the other trailers since. Have, has confused me more. By and large... How can something as beautiful as this be dying? A plague is ruining the land, but the tree of life still stands. Question is, for how long? End is coming to the new world. The tribes stand divided, in need of someone strong enough to unite them, or bring them all down. This is a story with an unusual beginning. So, let's expect an unusual end. Welcome to Biomutant. That's a big old block of text. Do 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 do, where's my thingy? Okay. Usually look in version is in camera if camera has its own menu, but okay. Is it under controls? There you go. There you go, buddy. That's all I wanted. Let's see what the intended experience looks like. That is an intense level of saturation. Encode your DNA. Hello. Definitely curious about the character creator. Choose breed. Primal Dumdon Rex Hy Hyla Fip. <laughs> Look at the tiny little like stuffed animal eye. 
and Murgle. Okay. There's like a bit more variety. Something, something that had bothered me a little bit is the uh, seeing this character and he's just like a ball for a head with like sort of like the, all the details sort of almost like glued over it. And I saw more and more enemies in the trailers that looked like they were like Muppet enemies that all kind of looked like they had the same structure. They deviate a bit here and there. What is these? What is the details? Uh, nimble. A nimble developed anthropomorphic breed, a hybrid and a gene mutation making them nimble and dexterous at the cost of less developed intact, intellect. The least developed anthropomorphic breed. Oh. A hybrid offshoot that compensate the lack of mental prowess with physical strength. An extraordinarily developed anthropomorphic breed, a, a hybrid outcast with an even DNA string, making it apt for both physical and mental challenges. But not agility, I guess? But everyone's agility seems to be the same. Hmm. I assume that the other ones are better at what they do then? Isla, a regenerative developed Anthropomorphic breed, a hybrid with a gene mutation making them extremely tough and resilient. A FIP breed is renowned for its highly evolved mind. Its genius is directly interlinked with the... Directly interlinked... Sorry, it's early. <laughs> to the power of key, which amplifies psionic output. So this puts you heavy on... Okay, this is kind of a... <laughs> this is a problem with character creators and RPGs in general, but... I don't know how to play this game yet. <laughs> so they're throwing terms at me where I'm not totally sure what the implications will be. I feel like half of RPGs are best played if you just like make a character, play for two hours, delete that character, start over, and then be like, okay, now I know how to play this game. Now I know why I'd want a character to have this or that stat. It's like, how much does charisma come into play, for example? I think this is from like the ex-developers of Just Cause. So, like, what's a charisma stat do in a game made by people like that? What, what can I expect? <laughs> Murgle is the definition of an idealized breed. I don't like this phrasing. <laughs> its evolutionary lineage has gone in a direction where its form and appearance have dominated over function. So it's just charisma. He's just a charisma guy. He doesn't have intellect, strength, or vitality. People just like him a lot, and that's it. <laughs> it's the YouTuber, the, the YouTuber breed. <laughs> That's intellect, that's vitality, that's a little less intellect. It's like a tiny bit of green on intellect. I guess it's well-rounded between strength and other things. That's interesting. Every single thing you, you highlight has red and green meters, as if to imply they're going up and down compared to something. But your starting meter... Uh, even the first character has that. So, like, I don't know what they're comparing them against. I guess it's just, like, an imaginary default you can't see anywhere. What does randomize do? Does it change their stats? That's odd. So it's not like a character creator randomizer. It just highlights a random one of the six characters and, and is just like, all right, if you don't want to pick one of the six, I can randomize one of the six for you, I guess. Okay. Let's play as this guy, because he looks like he's having a good time. Find your character starting attributes. To see more detailed explanations of what the effect of each attribute has, press start. Define your genetic structure. Not start, select. Or whatever the fuck they call buttons now. We used to have really clean names for buttons with start and select. Now I don't really know what anything's called and I never remember anymore. I got a hamburger button and I've got a two windows button on my Xbox One X X Series X controller. I don't I guess that's the other problem. I can't even remember the name of the console anymore because the Xbox names are such a pain in the ass. Move speed is your move speed. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Kriak. Charisma's bartering. Critical chance is your chance of 
criticaling. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Except for the stuff, it's more, when I talk about understanding games, I mean more in terms of like this kind of stuff. Like, do I like the items or crafting or key, <laughs> like special effects in a game? Because uh, you run into problems with like, what, cyberpunk? Where like you, I specialized in crafting and spent the rest of the game being like, oh, I don't like this game's crafting at all. It doesn't feel useful or fun. Good thing I specialized in it. Preemptively. Never get those points fully back. This is randomizing within. <laughs> it's a living. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wait. Why did that make his head huge? A lot going on here. This is just if you want to be all jacked, you get this really wide head. Oh god, his head grew out. His ears go all over the place. I have so many questions. This is your ad your agile. Your high agility, high strength character. So you have you move really fast and you hit really hard and you're trash and everything else. And it gives you like this like severe overbite, but otherwise you look vaguely like a hyena. It's, it's kind of neat to see a snout just because the starting character model was just a ball for a head. So this is a big change. I kind of like this guy. Choose a genetic resilience. What does that mean? Does it make me look different at all? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, so just what element do you want to be resistant to? Slash all of them. Or none of them? Just one of them? 25% resistance to just one thing? Or 6% resistance to all of them? Interesting. No. Less interesting. No, I thought the math worked out differently for a second there. Yes, yeah, 6 times 4 is 24, so it's approximately the same amount of resistance points no matter what. I thought that hyper-specializing might give you more points, essentially. It does look like if you slightly deviate from the middle, you get bonus points. So when I was in the middle, it was 24 points. When I was on the edge, it's 25 points. Right now, it is 26 points. I just got two more points of biohazard without losing this, any of the sixes. I wonder how far I can push that. Now it's a nine and they're all fives. Yeah, they're fives now. I might have glitched it in that moment, and I'll never get it back now. There it is. So six, 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 eight. Boom. Choose your first style. Fucking pro tip there, speedrunners. If you want, what? Why, guys? Why'd you do this? You didn't have to commit to a weird circle that I scroll around in for every menu. This is just a list of fur. These are, there's, there's this, there's no gradient here to scroll through. These are just discrete, different things. And I'll never know how, all the options because they're hidden somewhere in a, th in like a two-dimensional disc instead of a drop-down menu. <laughs> what is, there's no, I guess it feels like you're discovering the one you used a little bit, maybe? Does the, does the tail, the tail change? It does. I guess there's a little bit of a discovery feeling because like, oh, I found this first style in this weird part I wandered into but like I don't know why you'd make this menu this way that's just like a UX failure Too much white looks weird I'll just go with this guy lemurry looking thing pick your main color primary color oh you can really commit to making this weird huh they're uh the brightness slider. So just brightness or saturation? I can make myself a nice deep purple if I want to. Choose your detail color. And then here's the one that actually is your color, apparently. Wow, this is rude. That was like my entire character's appearance. Is that one? Is this color? 
Pick your main color. Maybe I should make my main color something else then. Randomize. I guess based on what skin you pick, it might look different. Choose your detail color. Hmm, I don't know if I can ever make this look right again. Pick a class. Choose your pick your main. Choose your first style. No. Pick your main color. You can never go back. You can never go back, guys. Choose your detail color. If you go back to the previous menu, it doesn't reset. So you can't get the original uh, appearance that actually looked okay. So they're just trusting everybody to like really be able to nail their physical appearance here. Cause, uh, and have really good color theory and whatnot. Otherwise your character's just gonna look like a kind of a nightmare the whole game. This is hard. Pick your main color. Yeah, I can't I can't make him look the way he did before. I can just try my best. Pick okay. Class. Okay, so the breeds and classes are separate. Deadeye is a tricky, skillful rogue who's chosen a life outside of law and society values. Commando. Deadeye. A gun. Bigger gun, I guess. Sci freak. That's clearly not what I built my character for, but I dig the mad scientist costume. Saboteur. Dual wielding melee dude. Sentinel. Why is he dressed like that? Where, where's the where's the big sword I was promised before? Oh, there it is. But he's the rogue? <laughs> With that giant sword, he's the rogue? I guess he's the title character. Marines weapon attacks inflict 10% more damage to the target. That's a, a boring effect. Percent increase damage things are usually pretty boring as far as effects go. Ranged weapons are reloaded instantly is an interesting effect. It might mean they're just instantly reloaded when you use it. You shoot a spark ball. This is the magic, but we're not specializing in that. Equip two different one-handed melee weapons to dual wield them. Your dodge energy is reduced by 20. What does that have to do with being a saboteur? A saboteur is a cunning, skilled explorer trained to operate covertly in both suburbs and wilderness. Where's the sabotaging? <laughs> where, where, where does that come in? Sentinel. Sentinels dedicate themselves to protect a house. The dedication for the organization as a whole, including supreme belief in their dogma. Base armor plus 10. Not very exciting. He doesn't even get like a, a big old sword. The most impressive melee weapon is given to the rogue for some reason. Commando. Sci freak. Saboteur. Alright, let's try saboteur. Saboteur chosen. Yes, did that. Good choice. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. Thought something was wrong. You didn't listen to me. What? Oh, mouse. That's my bad. That's my bad. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. I took the road less traveled by and it made all the difference. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy that flows through everything. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the dark side of you. Your inner voice, to be precise. An echo of the balance and consequence of your actions as you move forward. Come. 
can't believe you'd choose that thing over me. But I'll be here waiting for you when you have a change of heart. That thing? I'm right here. Let me remind you, we're two halves of the same. With the difference being I'm the better half. Better half? My way is both better and brighter. Light makes it easier to see the best end. The best end is the one you decide yourself. And it seems we're headed in the right direction. Huh. Oh. Kinda hope they'd make a better argument for it or something. My aura is somewhat dark. I guess I just picked evil, but I thought they'd at least like make an argument or like discuss the pros and cons, try to seduce me to the dark side. They basically just like, hey, good or bad, and then you just pick one, and, and then afterwards they do a little argument with each other that still doesn't cover any ground necessarily. Let's see, do they have uh whiteness? <laughs> Definitely wondering, like, do they have a freaking... Where is it? Come on, guys. Can I put a background behind the subtitles? Because, holy crap, that is, um... The subtitles are very hard to read. I don't think we're gonna get anything. Okay. They made a very bright, saturated game and then put white subtitles with only the tiniest Guess little fringe behind be them. Right sometimes. He is roll. Okay. Stories of death and the bodies left behind. A reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others. Meat eaters, meat. Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the predator only grew stronger. Hello. Ooh, roll. How you doing? What is Feather's Flight? Oh, a gun. <laughs> of course. That's what I think when I hear her. But I hear Feather's Flight. This is a thing that also surprised me, is this game is framed as being a like a martial arts game, if you read the stuff about it. I was definitely surprised when it then was like, and also there's a bunch of guns! And I'm like, what? I don't... Okay. Oh, do some... This is how you get in some, uh... Ooh, it's a little unsatisfying. I was waiting for the Dantes or Nero's like midair midair shooting from a uh, uh, Devil May Cry. Let's see, Panther sweep. You just mean swing a melee, yeah? Swing a melee. Hello. Viper bite. Just dodge then attack. Back in the air. Ooh. We did the thing from the trailer! Are we reenacting the trailer right now? I, ha I noticed in the other screens that... Oh, we are. I could take him. Loser. Ow. <laughs> okay, you can't deflect that, probably. How do I unlock? Okay. The, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think we, we are reenacting the trailer. I noticed that I had the little gremlin hand, and I was like, does that mean the trailer was real? This time, it was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. Things are a little, a little more chill right now that the game's darker. This is like might be one of the few games I'd consider modding to make less colorful. Which is really weird because I love colorful games. 
But there's like a Fortnite level of like saturation that's like beyond anything I've ever seen. Like, Predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the tree of life started to die. Is the ceiling pooping mole rats? Move towards an enemy to target them with your melee attacks, okay? You reload ranged weapons with RB. Key energy is used for dodging using mutations, performing special attacks. When you add up key energy, you'll be unable to perform these actions. But it regenerates. But it's like... Whoa, it takes a while to regenerate when you use it for dodging. Let's just look at my blue meter for a bit. I'm using it to dodge around. It really takes a long time to drain, too. That's... Okay, now there's a... There was less of a pause. The first time I dodged, it seemed to pause without regenerating for a long time. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty much spamming. Bam! Thwack. <laughs> Sock. Hmm. So they made... They decided to have comic book style subtitles for the sounds, the automatopoeia. But they don't reflect the weapon I'm using. Thing bam and sock. It's a I'm using a sword. It's a, a almost exclusively stabby one. I'm Raphael, scaled down apparently. Damn, didn't even need to turn it. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. You found a special weapon add-on attached to your ranged weapon to give an extra damage boost for uh, while the ammo lasts. Oh. As long as the ammo lasts, does... Hmm. It doesn't say ammo. I guess it has a magazine size. To attach a special effect. It is a lot. Okay. Maybe they just mean the ammo that lasts in your gun, just in general. But that's an unnecessary that's an unnecessary thing to bring up in that context, because it just confuses things by making you think that the that the uh, add-on is limited. Health does not automatically regenerate, you needed consumables. Press up. These toilets were not made for me. Small health pack! No! Don't use it! Don't put, don't put that in you. Just be glad there's a rope. Oil sludges everywhere. To Hello, I have a gun. It shoots lightning now. It, lightning is not very effective apparently because you're taking a lot of bullets. Alright, these people are spongy. Yeah, you really do just hammer on people. Womp. Yeah, I don't think I was wrong. <laughs> I do think it's not going to quite be what the uh, what the trailer kind of set it up to be. It's a lot of loot. Oh, you don't get to keep the weapon, it turned into stuff. Ooh, I was sinking. <laughs> Just a big old death icon right there. Hmm. 
Nope. Oh. I pressed the wrong button to dodge. What button? Hmm. What am I playing? Oh, it's I'm playing I'm playing Yakuza. I was like, what made me think A was dodge? <laughs> Even though I've been playing this game and it hasn't been. Okay. Yeah, combat seems to be more along the lines of like a Batman game. When you use melee, at least. Ah, shit. That's not working out for me. But down to having the, uh, even the thing over your head that that's like... Here comes the guy! Here's some lightning bolts indicating they're gonna hit you. Better react in time. Which is the symbol used in Batman and Hand of Fate. They said health does not regenerate out of combat. Or in general, I think. But it's, I thought it was just regenerating. Maybe, maybe they said it only regenerate, only doesn't regenerate during combat or something. I missed it. I'm skimming a little bit because there is a lot of pop-ups happening right now. And I kind of want to get to the meat of it if I can. Because one of my big curiosities is whether this even is at all an RPG. The way that they market it as being. Or if it's just like a, an open world game where you level up and complete a big Assassin's Creed map and so on and then they're like it's an RPG because something went up in number at some point and I'm like that's not mm. some enemies have large shields you need to break them hello you really wow you really do need to break his shield I'm attacking past it and it doesn't hurt him I broke a shield Camera is interesting. Ah, shit. It, uh, almost helps you. <laughs> uh, there's a lock on, but you don't really control it. It's just you engage with with melee with somebody, and then they, ah. You get the feel for this better. I'm really messing up really simple things right now. Leveling up. Quests and enemies do that. You can raise one of your attributes by 10. You also get one point you can use to unlock new skills. Tongue tickly. An old world claw bar. Yeah, I assume it's used as a tool, right? I don't think I need to switch to that as a weapon. I think I'm doing fine. What I've got. The wrong. That's that. You pressed the double button thing, not the hamburger button. Okay. What do we want to pump up? Even more strength? Move speed. Wait, I do seem to have significant move speed. It's pretty funny. What if you were more jacked? Look at that tiny, tiny, bony little gremlin hand. <laughs> uh, close combat. Who wield melee? Okay, so here's my category. The warped bull, press X. Leaping madness, BX. Comet's foot, AX. Double dragon, lots of X. Twin Silver Grip is just having dual wielding. Okay. Hunt Stoppable Pig, XXY. Are there going to be more later? This is a short list. This one's shooting and then hitting Y? Okay. So, Unstoppable Pig. Hitting an enemy with this will fill up the Super Wong Fu icon. There's Wang Fu. Melee. Just all of my attacks though right now. What? There's so many pop-ups. I cannot. <laughs> I can't. 
There's my new combo. There you go. So we have a finisher now. I do kind of dig the way he's running with the, uh, the sword just sort of hanging off to the side. That pipe looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. You did not put that where I thought you were going to put it. You kind of didn't put it anywhere, honestly. Okay. Whoop! Whoa. That was the death hole. You're dead. That was a it's weird level of faith you put into that. Place. No, really, I mean it. No, that's not good. I should have committed. <laughs> well, there's a death. A death worthy of a hero. It was not. Oh, it's so bright. The contrast between the light and the dark settings. Okay. Yes, yeah, the, the pot. I was moving pretty fast because my that's what I do. I'm very fast. So by the time the, the uh, double jump popped up, I wasn't quite ready. Produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Blobs that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being when absorbed, including you. Unstoppable pig. A smart foe would leave now. A smart foe would leave now. Well, they're praying mantis fungus monsters, so we gotta give them a little, a little leeway. There, they have so much health. <laughs> this is a very spongy game already. That's not a, not my favorite sign. They're like, they're not very reactive. It is the tutorial. I get that much, but they take a long time to kill. Still trying to figure out if I can even manually control who I'm attacking. It keeps locking onto people sort of automatically, but I can't like. That. Okay, clicking the stick is photo mode. I think that's. I don't need that. Out. That would have been better mapped as like a control thing to help me change who I'm uh, targeting instead of photo mode. Gotcha. Bio blobs. You absorbed a bio blob. They unlock mutations. I'll probably miss one vital thing, but it's almost worth it if I can skip ten redundant explanations of, like, progression systems exist. You know, like one of the ones in every game. We have them. They will now be slowly explained to you over the course of ten slides. These doors are very not sealed. Toxanol built vessels called arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single arc they left behind that we know other arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Yeah, with how ill-suited the environment is for me, I assume pretty much everything is referring to, like, what happened to humanity, and why they're not here. You found a puzzle! There's a number- the moves is how many moves you have before the, the puzzle stops working? Intellect determines that. Each node has a certain position and must be rotated to complete the puzzle. Running out of moves before they have may have consequences. Um, make them all match each other. Okay, so I have three of these. Boom. Th 
There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. Humans ruin the world the way they're doing it now. Except cool, radical, crazy shit happened instead of the depressing stuff that's going to happen. The sound of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. I kind of thought we got past these kinds of intros to video games like 15 years ago. Honestly, this game feels strangely dated. Puzzling to short circuit the door. Just the very slow paced hand holdy uh, uh, intros where you just have to sit just through left. Make them count. so many long winded explanations. And like these, like every time you walk into a room, a cutscene like sways, to, the, the camera sways to one thing in a cutscene discusses that, then sways to another thing, and like, just really carefully explains the game to you in excruciating detail. I haven't played a game that did this for a while. There you go. Honestly, if you just lock somebody in a room with one interactive object, they'll probably figure it out. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, is that a human? Or is that... Or is that like a mutant blob person in a chair? Huh. Perfectly countering an enemy's strike will uh, stun them. If stars over their head. You can launch it up in the air with the left bumper. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. Oh, his friend. I must say friend. Oh, they're gonna stab friend. Look how sad he is. Why is everybody here such a dick? Oh my god, there's so many of them. Why are they, who did you piss off? He's got a gun! So that Hellboy comic, like, that monkey's got a gun! Why did I attack nobody? I was attacking somebody! I don't like this weird, it kind of just picks who to attack. This, this, this in, in crowds it seems to be a mess. So I did my big flurry of attacks, and I was clearly attacking a specific guy, and then it turned to somebody else, but they weren't in range. So I unleashed my flurry of attacks on somebody that wasn't in range that I didn't tell it to attack. Instead of the guy I was already fighting. Weird. Chop, chop. What a blow. I kind of dig where some of the visuals are going. I don't think the comic text fits very well. And the game's too saturated in the daylight, although in the darkness here it's harder to notice that. But we, we got a glimpse of that in other parts of the game earlier. Right now the color looks okay. Unfortunately, I don't think that the world and visuals are being serviced well by the combat, which so far I already am kind of getting tired of. And it's the tutorial. You just kind of wail on people for a long time while their health slowly diminishes. And, and I'm not doing it flawlessly, obviously. Like, I could be actually doing a better job at evading and counterattacking, which I would get to eventually. But it's not very stimulating. 
me getting under engaged by the combat is probably part of why I'm not quite as attentive as I could be at reacting to it. Because it's just like, I'm just, just like, I have so much health bar to burn through. Like, let's keep going. Let's just keep swinging. The gun immediately feels bad to use, so I'm just using the melee, which doesn't feel incredible, but the gun, I'm just like, eh. It's not particularly exciting to do this either. Oh, hey, I ran out of lightning, so I guess it does have, does have limited ammo. Like, look at the look at the, how the camera's interacting with my character, and like how weird this looks while I'm shooting. Like, then, like <laughs> I'm not even sure if the shots are going where my target, my reticle's going. It feels awful as a shooter immediately. That on top of the idea that it's supposed to be like a, like a martial arts RPG, so like the gun feels like a boring thing to add to that. <laughs> He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. Mpa, wherefore, where Come, Reaper. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. Kuzata Ghetto. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. Mpa, wherefore, where put the water? There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. Balodolo. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone. But the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your Muma. There's no doubt you're the child. And that what Looper Lupin did to your village, your Moomer and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. Yeah, you mawa. Fofo umba bakwa papabu. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back. But he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Moomer's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. The impending threat of the World Eaters bringing down the Tree of Life is ever so close. He also worries about the Jagni tribe that's actively working for a doomsday and purging of the world. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. By default, dialogues are set to advance from one NPC line to the next item. Yeah, okay. The next level amount of pop-ups. Way back in the long ago, do I have... I've got both eyes! Or maybe I... I, I almost wonder if I do have both eyes. If they said that I was, I was hiding the scar. That's not entirely clear. Got my little pile of kick-ass. So are they going to commit to this? This choice to have every character say the in-universe language for a moment and then the narrator explains what they said? every line of dialogue for the entire game? Is that going to be the whole game? I guess it cuts down on voice actors for a world this big. That might be exactly why they did it, actually. Oh my god. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. Is this a sea otter with a pompadour and sideburns? <laughs> Sounds like he thinks she does, despite your heart growing dark. 
There's nothing as powerful as a Moomer's love. <laughs> he understands why you came all the way out here to see them, the potato people. <laughs> the potato people, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. I don't believe in magic. Magic? He claims it's just the force of life, the existence of energy, powering and connecting all things living, like the Nono. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it, see if you can make one come out of hiding. Well, that wasn't expected. <laughs> this character it sounds like he's making like Elvis noises or some shit with this like simlish gibberish. That hair, this, the glasses that somehow fit, suggesting that they still make glasses in this universe and they don't just scavenge old human ones or something because those, those wouldn't fit on a human. Or a run faster button. Wonder. Oof. Double jump, you can also roll jump. That's a little bit of a weird visual. Shortcut! No fall damage, yet. Oh my god, look at that swim. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? What? He could only handle swimming for like 10 seconds. Not even 10, that wasn't anywhere close to 10 seconds. All right. Apparently swimming's really hard. Yeah, shadow and darkness does a bit to mask over the saturation levels and it kind of makes things pleasant again you found one you should be proud they don't come out for everyone <laughs> the Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. Will it grow strong enough? <laughs> <laughs> Only time will tell. At least his intention is to dedicate his life to it. He has the feeling the fate of the world depends on it. <laughs> you need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. <laughs> You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy. <laughs> I'm so fucking tiny, I literally don't go up to his knee. I got this net that's like the size of my entire body. Oh my goodness. You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. This makes every dialogue twice He's as long. grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. How many does it need? <laughs> oh, it'll need a continuous flux of key over the 20, 12 months to come, so countless, he'd say. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> but to 
today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Feels like they took the leisurely, chill, slow narrator that does the storybook narrating of like unfinished swan. But then we're like, you're gonna voice the entire game. You know, an exposition driven RPG. <laughs> you're gonna keep that exact cadence and slow tone that was used for just a couple sentences at a time, but for like extended exposition segments for the entire game. Every convert every every scene like that so far, I'm just like, okay, it takes twice as long as it has to because they keep voice acting and then actually saying what they're saying. But also every one of these scenes, like it's like overwritten and too much. It's like they're they're they're, they're there's too much redundant dialogue. Then on top of the redundant dialogue, the narrator just says it in a slow, not particularly personality-filled way, and you're like, um, mm, I don't know if I want the whole story to be told this way, though. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. <laughs> From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. <laughs> One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Moomer will be able to protect us. You can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Moomer comes looking for you. You did good here today. She only cares about one foo. <laughs> That's not true. She's the reason there's still unity, and the only one strong enough to keep the six Wang Fu disciples disciplined. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the Tree of Life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun. And it wasn't long after that that the World Eaters arrived. World Eaters. The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse that Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the World Eaters' DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his Octopod to confront the Merc Puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the Northwest Route. Noko has tamed the Majut and is preparing to take on the Hoof Puff at the end of the East Route. This is basically noise. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide, a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The, water. the road ahead won't be easy. But he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. 
How can I defeat the world eaters? His friends have prepared something specific for each world eater. The Mekton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Googlide are almost ready to ride. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. I feel like we... <sighs> We need to learn more from Breath of the Wild, I think. Just having a nice starting area where you just go around and you get to fully engage with the game systems in a way that, like, both encourages and rewards your curiosity as you explore this, like, open world and get the feel for it. And then you, like, layer on mechanics as you go and then, ex and then let the full scale and scope of the story uh, take hold at some point. But, like... This whole linear cave where you just dump everything on people. You make a character and commit to stats before you understand how the gameplay feels. And then you just have endless series of linear cutscenes and tutorials and people just jabbering at you about a world you barely comprehend so far. Like, str straight up, I think this guy just was like... He, it feels like he just did the... Like, he explained the structure of the entire game to me at the beginning of it. Like, if somebody was like, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go three different elemental temples and you're going to get little gem MacGuffins from those. Then you're going to take them to the Temple of Time and play the Ocarina, and then you're going to go into the future and then do the, then get the three MacGuffins from the future, and then you're going to fight Ganondorf. Like, I feel like I was just told the structure of the whole game. Like, there's a bunch of tribes that are at war with each other, and so I need to either win or resolve that war, and then also go to either these four places and meet these four NPCs that, if I have perfect memory, I already know by name, then get into their exact specific device that you get into to fight the exact specific boss, which I know the name of the- I know the name of the NPC and the, uh, and the device and the boss. At least that's what the game seems to want me to know, because they just explained all of that to me. I'm not going to remember any of those names, but it's like, straight up like, like, immediately being like, you're going to get Rivali's Gale, and you're going to go, like, resolve the problems with the local, uh, Zora, and in order to get the ability to go up waterfalls, and then you can go take out the local, uh, like, guardian beasts, and it's like, oh, okay, this is, no, you don't need to explain all the steps, that's too much, that's way too much. At most, you it's good. It's fine just to like mention a problem for me to look into. That's like a spanning thing. You'd be like, ah, oh, these things are one. These the, the roads, the, the world tree are getting eaten by these big monsters. Oh no, you're our last hope. And then it's the conversation's over in like a minute. You're like, oh okay, I, I get it. I think I know what's going on here. I kind of like the designs of these characters. I was even amused by the the ridiculous like anime mentor figure swagger that the Elvis otter had or whatever but even if he like all of his voice lines were way too long and his exposition got boring like the, the effect kind of wore off quickest way out is through the roof where they came in and the rope looks strong enough to climb Like, we're at like an hour in, and some of it's my fault, but I'm like, please, let me get to the world. Just let me see what the game feels like. And here we are. It's very, oh, it's bright. Know that the tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. I know. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. I know. You could have just said that without any of the flashbacks or the entire NPC I just met. <laughs> that was like, you just concisely like sum summarized everything in a way that I'd be like, oh, the world tree is getting eaten. Oh, they want to stop that. Oh, there's a run. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see. I peed on it. Okay. 
Signposts are found near locations of interest all around the world. You unlock a signpost when interacting with it. Fast travel. That's it, basically. You pee on it and it becomes a fast travel point. Do I wear sh do I wear shoes? I do. Well, hello. That escalated quickly. It's, there appears to be a shark burris. That must be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. How did he only lose his leg? Marks on our world over time. That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Where did he go? There's like no exit here. So let me fight him now. I can take him. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. I don't think they're happy. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the world eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. Aura. Your inner balance is too has morality. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Alright, just gonna interrupt him now, apparently. Interacting with captives and side shrines will allow you to sour points and like your side. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. Leave you to your fate. He can't understand why you'd do such a thing. He won't make it out of here on his own. Oh my god. <laughs> Good work, clever cogs. Let me guide you into the dark. I always like the darkness. Seriously? I always thought better of you than that. And you were wrong. There's always more dark than light. There's still time to turn back. They're already heading down my road. The escalation, just fucking decking him in the face. That's not what I picked, technically. I just be like, eh, I'm not dealing with your shit. They <laughs> fucking attacked him. <laughs> All right, you got a side point. It's based on like morality powers or something. Dead. <laughs> There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. No, not more. Waiter, God, Koibe. Out of date knows you'll make a better stand against the world eaters with the support of a tribe, and there's two nearby. The Jatni tribe is likely to be your primary choice as they seek to become omnipresent and, most importantly, feared. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Jagni isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagni's or Myriad's side. 
to Huai, Farfarito, Tuka Kubu. He believes the tribe Sifus, Jagni especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. Why Jagni? He believes you share Jagni's view on the world. Regardless, Jagni would welcome someone that had helped them against the Myriad tribe. Come, Ripa, Muk, Bebuk. He'll be waiting for you beneath the Tree of Life if you lose track of what you need to do. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. It's funny that it is just a choice of like, hey, you want to be a video game protagonist and save the world and do the thing that, you know, you do every and every game? Or do you just want to be a dick for no reason and murder some people, especially the weak, just trample them? <laughs> like, there's no, mor there's no moral ambiguity, really. It's just, hey, you want to be a prick? That's basically it. There's a whole faction for it. They're like, you know how I just spent all this time explaining how the world tree is getting eaten from the roots and all that? What if you just like went over there and just sided with the people that want to let him do it? You can do that. <laughs> that is funny. Side powers. Bio points, side points. What do I click on here? Aura? I'm somewhat dark. I got two light points. Did I accidentally behave out of character by saving out of date guy? Could I have just not saved him? Ooh. That's not how legs work. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure when you have, is it, yeah, digigrade legs where it bends backwards there, I think that's supposed to be basically the ankle. So you wouldn't have another ankle in the shoe. That's too many bendy points in one leg. That's freaking me out a little bit. Uh, I, I, I noticed that I was wearing these shoes, which are familiar-ish looking, but I didn't realize that I had digigrade legs at first. I thought I just had human legs. Uh, yeah, the toe, I, the toes, as far as I can tell, should just end where the ankles are, basically. Then these shoes shouldn't really have feet in them, basically, so they shouldn't be able to be on my feet. I essentially have two ankles, one up there, a foot off the ground, and one down there in the back of the shoe. That's not... yeah, that doesn't work. That's freaky looking. I got, like, spaghetti legs. Okay. Uh, side powers. Blaze and blink. It's teleport powers. Yes. To use Blink, push down the input you have bound the ability to. It will teleport you in the direction you are moving and create a shockwave where you reappear. Hey! Um. What would I want to bind it to, though? B, maybe? There must be. Okay, yeah, you press left trigger. I was like, I'm like, I already have things that the face buttons are used for. It's oh, they're, they're for combat. I can't also have them be blink. But they told me afterwards that that's where it was. Vile bile. Spew toxic slush in the direction you're facing. Gross. <laughs> Moth mouth? I, I have two different bleh, moves. Oh, they mix them fight each other. Pretty strong thing to just get like that. Why, I guess? One of the things that stood out to me about this game from, from the uh, tutorial with the gremlin arm too is that I, I definitely thought that you'd be picking up a series I can actually get more... Re oh. Wow. Wow. Each of these things increases your resistance by an entire 10%. That's meaty. I definitely thought we'd be going from place to place and getting upgrades, not in the form of, like, a progression experience system, but instead because we would be, like, amalgaming different animal parts on our character, and we'd become this bizarre mixture of different animalistic features as our, as our character keeps changing over the course of the game. But I'd, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we won't, because it's only a let's try. 
It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? Well, which one takes me where I want to go? I think the left one does, Ragni. Yeah, I def it's definitely easy to have your imagination go wild and think of really crazy things you can get. Get over it! <laughs> like, oh, what if you had cheetah legs and like a rhino horn and you'd, you'd build your character around like charging into people, but you'd have the ability to charge better because of the fact that you could uh, like sprint really well or whatever? I'm not sure if the game's really gonna have that. Area. Muddied up what used to be muck. As if it wasn't bad enough before the tribe war began. They restroyed, like they undestroyed it. Alright. <laughs> That's the Jagni tribe's fort. Their friendship can be a blessing or a curse. It's up to you. You're either a part of their solution to the tribe war, or part of the problem. BRB peeing in front of your house. Let's see. Why is it so yellow? No, I don't want to open the menu. Calm down. But I kill a real Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. The Sifu will want to see me. Says their door is always open for anyone willing to join their cause. You're not that cautious. <laughs> The Jagni tribe wants to become omnipresent and, most importantly, feared. They want to vanquish the tribes as the only way they can guarantee peace is through supremacy. The Sifu is determined to let the World Eaters destroy the Tree of Life as it's part of their strategy to cleanse the world and start anew. He welcomes you to the Jagni Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. They have said nothing new so far. That was a neat visual, but they have only repeated what they've said so far in this conversation for every line, and it's driving me crazy. Cold-blooded. He's referring to your rampage through Bunker 101. It seems you don't mind a bit of blood on your hands. That's something you have in common. He understands that sometimes we need to lose ourselves. In the music, the moment you want it, you better never let it go. But he's glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. Sometimes one memory can make another come to life. He hasn't thought about your Muma for ages, even though she taught him a lot. He was one of the original Wang Fu disciples. My Muma? Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it was based on unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. The Sifu says it's time to set the past aside, at least for now. Unrest is sweeping the land and there are rivals in all directions. Jagni doesn't want a new unity between the tribes. Their goal is to become omnipresent and, most importantly, feared. Says fear and hatred is the only path to domination, but you already know that. So embracing that side of you and helping them vanquish the tribes I'll join the Jagni. and letting the world... He expected you join them. You understand that the universe runs on the principle that the one who dominates others runs the show. 
teda mali mu za mit na zena kas pripadne? The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can vanquish the other tribes. Vanquish? Nalest stari dat. The Jagni's destiny is to do what others are too afraid to do. To vanquish past and future disillusions of you. Oh my god, say new things. Please. <laughs> Their kin must put an end to the war before war puts an end to them. It'll cost bruises and broken bone, but they refuse to be the victim here. We need to end this quickly. They have no intention of letting this drag out, or they'll run the risk of teaching the enemy their art of war. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of. He what? says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wung Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. What, how did he say that to me? You both share dark thoughts. What was that so cutscene? So they want to wage a war. A war where all that's left behind is casualties. Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've conquered the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu for control of their territory, tribe weapon, and kin. The tribe weapon? Your Muma taught each disciple a weapon. She never intended it for hunting, nor war, but lately, seeing you brings back his... Jackney doesn't want a new unity between the tribes. You already said that, like, five times. Holy shit. He remembers your kind and unselfish soul, and can sense you still have it in you. The will to do good. Anyway, you'll pass your old village on your way to the first rival outpost, but we've got no time to be sentimental. Sentimental? Or, it's always the little things you remember, and with you, it's pretty much the only thing he recalls that you were little. The Jagdi tribe was. Ah, oh, he's a good boy. The Jaggy tribe wants to be omnipresent and most of all feared. Let me repeat this seven more times, just in case you didn't get it. And I'm like, I... It's barely a comprehensible statement. Like, it barely meant anything the first time you said it. I already get that they're the ones that want to... Uh, all I had to hear was that they they believe that we need to conquer the other tribes because le letting the world eaters do what they want to do will lead to a purge and that, like, will actually save the world. Like... It's like a two-sentence explanation. And they kept re-explaining the same sentences to the point where I was convinced they were replaying the same voice line. Like, you would think if the voice actor had to repeat the same line over and over again, they'd eventually be like, Hang on a minute, haven't I said this one a lot? Did you want more takes or something? Or is this actually being used again? Little does the voice actor know, it's not only being used again, it's being used again in the same conversation! Over and over again! <laughs> Just go, oh my god, game, calm down. There's no universal rule, obviously. Like, that's not how things work. But, like, there's definitely, like, an aspect of, like, you might want to consider whether you can get. They were hit hard by evolution, the wonky ones especially. Deformed and unfurred. Seems kind of like a mean. <laughs> a mean way to talk about these guys. Ow, shit. That was a big shock wave. Perfect dodge. I think I think for a lot of games like this, there's just like there's there there's there's reasonable wisdom to be had in, in trying to have a kind of rule of like let's try to let's try to get the player into the action and understanding what the game is and whether or not they even like it and so on. You know, within like 20 minutes. 
reasonable goal, not counting character creation. Not like endless exposition like this. You can you can you can fill in the gaps as you go, and then like oh that's what's going on here, and you, like people like to learn as they go. Right in the face. I think about like how uh like Bioshock has a comp has a uh, relatively complicated setting with a lot of background and in context, but like you, it has one of the best uh, demos I've ever played in my life. Oh, that's weird. Uh, how do I let's right click? As one of the best demos I've ever seen, in, in, which was just the intro of the game. That wasn't good. What is, what's how much? Oh, did I just use something on accident? Already? Okay. Sorry, I need to beat this guy. It's hard to talk. Oh, this gun's so effective. That's boring. I don't even have to engage with him as an enemy, and it does this much damage. I was risking getting hit that whole time by doing real combat. That's disappointing. Wow, I do no damage. And that's what I specialize in doing. Oh, that's disappointing. I specialized in being some sort of jacked melee dude, and my gun is still so much stronger. Well, he's dead. But yeah, when I played Bioshock as a kid, it's, 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 there's two demos I remember playing a lot on the Xbox 360. It was Bioshock and Prey, the original one, like the Native American alien abduction one. And like, those are like, you get into the action relatively quickly, uh, but like you're intrigued by the setting, and like they they do. There's a lot of show don't tell, where just like you keep seeing things, and you're wondering what that means, and then you get the, like this audio log or this moment keeps filling in another gap as you go. But like you're playing the game, and it's a relatively simple cinematic intro where you're not ha be, it's not immediately super demanding, but you like you're getting to enjoy the experience on some level, and it intrigues you, and you want to see more. Whereas this approach, I thought we figured out was bad a long time ago, where you just lock the player in a box and explain things to them endlessly on the way to the getting the game time almost started. On this place, but it evokes a tingling sensation. There's something special about it, drawing you closer. And sometimes it's so dense with like terminology that you don't know yet that it's mostly just like. You're like, I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not taking any of this in. What are you saying? Let's see. Nope, don't care about this. Just want to mark it. Most people will just want to mark it most of the time, actually, game. <laughs> Oops, I pressed A. No, okay, we're fine. I pressed the wrong pause menu. Do do. Yeah, strength is melee damage. What? I don't even see a gun damage stat. Is it just how good your gun is and that's it? All that exercise helps. Does it though? I feel like I'm made of paper. Increase your loot chance. More persuasion. Biological mounts move faster. Special attacks replenish your key. Weapons based ranged attacks from enemies have a 10% chance to miss you completely. That seems handy. Let's see, do I have a better gun yet? Or what or melee weapon? I know what weapons are. So main hand. So many pop-ups. 1680 nature damage, I guess. The clencher stabby. Hand of death. So I don't have other weapons yet. 
Nothing for my head, nothing for my face. Shoulder. Looks like each individual shoulder gets a piece of equipment. You can take your clothes off. Looks snug. No shoes in this game. But yeah, I don't I don't have better weapons yet. So my gun just massively outclasses my melee centered melee character with As melee time stats. Passes, memories fade, and sometimes feelings change. It's not about who you were, it's about who you'll become. This story is far from over. Echoes of a long lost past, like whispers in the wind. Here's someone who takes each day as it comes. Oh my god. He asks how you are today. Can't complain. Then he wants you to know that if you find yourself going through bad times, you should just keep going. He wonders where you've been. He hopes you've been out at the lake, practicing your swimming technique. Clearly haven't been because I died last time I got in the water. I'm into Wang Fu. He understands Wang Fu is hard. That's why your Muma only has six disciples. Doing just one thing helps you get more done in less time. He thinks you should really know how to swim by now. I'd be grateful. And he'll be honored. Is he wearing a full body wetsuit that includes his tail? Even though he looks like he's somebody that's evolved for water without the wetsuit? You can swim in most waters while in very deep water you slowly use key and then you drown. Yeah. Now I knew this already. I, d I encountered water before. He says that wasn't too bad, was it? You almost drowned me! He says a feeling that you're going to drown is a great reminder of the need to learn how to swim. <laughs> but you need practice. Lots of practice. Swimming's not my thing. He's sure you'll have to face the consequences of that sooner or later anyway. <laughs> you just need more time in the surf. That's the only way you'll ever learn how to swim. Keep it to yourself. He won't let anyone know you can't swim. He assumes that's what you meant. Judging by your Muma's look, it seems you forgot something. You promised you'd train with her before the sun goes down. It's time to go. Ah, they made your mom look like you. I've been looking forward to it. The dedication to training is important. You can't rely solely on the fact that Wang Fu is in your blood. You should know. Practice makes perfect. It's not my fault Beaver Duck was throwing me in the water. I'll train harder. As long as it doesn't kill you, it'll only make you stronger. She'll see you at the village square. See you there soon. She'll be waiting for you. There will be a surprise for you at the end, too. Every single one of these conversations could be said in a third of the time. Of course. Asks how you're feeling today. They're trying to introduce... yeah. Because they just explained that there's four dudes trying to take down the four leaders, so now they are immediately ex introducing all of them in one flashback, it looks like. So now we have some context for that. But, man, not all at once, man. It's just not necessary. In fact, have a flashback about each character as I enter the territory of that character, maybe. When, you know, when it's contextually significant. There's This game has a, a nightmarish amount of front-loading, and it's just not necessary. Found anything you can use? Blah, 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 blah. Found anything you can use? His only interest when creating is that what he comes up with is actually useful. <laughs> he was hoping you could help him pick up some scrap for a thingamajig he's working on. 
If you pick it up, I don't have to. It's your own future you're risking by not caring for the environment. The next generation will pay for the mistakes of the last. You should look for things that are recyclable. It shouldn't take you too long to find some. Oh. New main. Do I have to do that? Can I go do the training? With mom? Okay, the pause menu doesn't work the same way. I don't think I can go training. What's going on now? <laughs> they just pushed me over. Is that the leader of the Ragni? On the left? Oh yeah! The one- they just shove you away, that's a dick move. The one on the left is the leader of the Ragni, and the one on the right is the leader of the- whatever the other people were called. The good guys. I recognize them. It's kind of an ET. Wow, that's a hell of a big hitbox. I don't know. Guys, this this is a weird one. I like the idea of the weird little the weird little customizable characters and just these fucking weird NPCs. And that being a, and going on some weird kung fu adventure to stop the world eaters from eating the tree or whatever. And the, the hilariously extreme moral difference between the hyper good and hyper bad. But uh, I don't think I can take any more. <laughs> the, uh, the combat's not any fun. And it doesn't have anything else to show me, apparently, besides very long bouts of exposition that are excruciating. All of the dialogue is excruciating in this game. And it's partly because you don't get to have individual characters that have their own personalities and line deliveries and voices, but instead the same slow storybook uh, like, he, like he's a storybook narrator that's that's what that voice is for and he's saying, and he's narrating all of it and it's just, and he doesn't ooh but also like every, they repeat themselves so much and the and it's paced like a nightmare ah uh, this, this game doesn't have a lot going for it besides its original idea, which I wish worked out, but I don't think it did. I think I'm gonna call it here, though. Well, uh, once again, I got a code for this game, so that's context if it matters to you. I haven't done that many Let's Tries. Uh, this kind of fell in the same territory as the Werewolf game I did a few weeks or months ago for Let's Try, where I was like, oh, I got a code, and I was curious about this game, so I'd like to play it for a bit, but I don't think it's something I'd want to commit to for a full series. Once I realized this was going to be an open world game that probably didn't have that much RPG stuff going on, but instead a lot of, like, busy work, I was already kind of iffy on the idea after an initial, curios uh, an initial curiosity. And now that I've seen more of the gameplay and storytelling, I'm like, yep, yep, it would be, it wouldn't go well <laughs> if I committed to this for like a 60 episode playthrough or however long it probably would take. But, uh, I don't know. It's a bummer because I want to root for this kind of game because it's like the it's like the double A part of the industry, which there isn't enough of yet. Budget games, there's not enough of that anymore. It's all these hyper triple A expensive games, even though all the interesting stuff usually happens in the indie market or in the sort of double A sphere a little bit. Like for some context, uh, games like Dark Souls and Yakuza are made in more of the Japanese, like, double-A-ish market, as opposed to, like, a Square Enix title, like Final Fantasy XV. And it seems like, they, it feels like they benefit from it, like, the, the smaller scale, the lower budget and lower stakes lets them not worry about appealing to absolutely everybody and so on. And so, like, you want, you want games like in this tier to really go somewhere and nail it and so it's it's a bit of a tragedy when you're like oh man i don't want to touch i don't really want to touch this necessarily uh we'll see if i ever get into a proper groove with let's tries again they used to have their own dedicated time slot but that was just too much but i might i might get around eventually to having some kind of fixed schedule of every week or every other week so at least some of these are happening again because they haven't been whoops either way i'll see you next time this has been Biomutant. It's available on uh, many platforms.